Welcome back. I've got a phone holder for my van, which you can see now, which is fabulous. Bought another thing as well, which should change things a little bit for me for content wise or what I can actually record and show you guys firsthand, which is like a neck thing, which my DJI camera slots into, which is very cool. Last thing is obviously I'm wearing a vest again. Uh, I've been chasing the past two days at this job. I'm also chasing again today with a few more bits. The chaser broke last week. So I've had to bring my other chaser over to give this a go. When I say the chaser broke, the blade's knackered and I couldn't be bothered to take the blade out the other one. So I've just bought the whole chaser. Uh, I got very hot. So hence why I look homeless wearing this. And I'm also booked in for a haircut, so just allow it. So let's get in, I'll show you around what we've done so far. And I'm gonna wait another 25 minutes before I actually do any work because of the family next door with five young children and a newborn baby before I start making too much noise. Alrighty then, I hope you had a good weekend. It was Father's Day for me yesterday. Just a quick update on everything. Uh, obviously I don't have a dad, I'm mean, joking. I, I obviously say this too much, I'm just messing when I say it. I'm not messing, I don't have a dad, but I find humor in saying it because if you don't, it's just sad. I had the best Father's Day I think I've ever had so far. Uh, we went across to the motorbike shop. I went on the bike with my mate, the kids, and the other half uh, met us there. I then proceeded to spend £600 on bike stuff and bike gear for the kids and my other half, which might sound ridiculous on Father's Day that I'm spending that much money. To me, it was the best day ever. The kids are kitted out. We then came home. I took my daughter out for just a little ride around the block. I then took my lad out for a little bit and then he wanted to go more. So we ended up going further afield and they then got to experience for the first time ever sitting on the back of a motorbike, which is comfortable with a backrest with a seat and feel safe and be excited for it with me like I did with my dad back in the day. It was fantastic. We then sat down in the evening, watched England play and all in all, absolute fabulous weekend. So coming off an absolute buzzing day yesterday. So I hope you had a good Father's Day as well. And um, yeah, let's crack on. Right, I've got the little gimbal thing on my neck, so I'm gonna try and do this POV for you guys. So, from the last video, when we quoted to rewire the, well, rewire the house, the kitchen is the newest kitchen. And as you can see here, you wouldn't have thought any different. So we put on the quote, install feeds to sockets, and all we're gonna do was just do a little junction up here before, so we don't have to ruin any of the new kitchen and tiles. Last thing on Friday, I thought, I took the floor up, I couldn't see any new cables, so I went and took this one off, the cooker off, and a few other ones off. And as you can see here, we have VIR cable there, and then as well with the kitchen, cooker, VIR, all feeding it down here. So I've had a chat with the customer, and the plan is, with this one, I'm gonna obviously cut the cables off, I'm gonna drill straight through, round to the other side, which is gonna be there. So what I'm gonna to do to cover for zones, I'm gonna do a chase up, chase down, do an extra double socket down here for zonings, and this will be another circuit ran in that will be next to my chase, which will run down to here, but then the zones for the double socket below, we'll cover that, we'll drill straight through, that will be fine, but then there's a few more. We're gonna to wanna to do another socket, the other side of the hob, so I'm gonna do a light, we did originally the light switch is here, I'm gonna move the light switch into the downstairs toilet there, use the same zonings as well to go through, punch through for another socket. And then we've got the cooker one. So currently the cooker is over there. I physically can't get to that without breaking any tiles or even chipping them off, which we're not going to do. The customers specifically asked, please, please, please do not damage the tiles. So I'm gonna do a cooker point in the cupboard below here, in the back, either this one or this one, use the same zones as we can for the sockets coming down to punch through, do a isolation switch within this cupboard or this cupboard, to then link through to the hob and cooker. That's all fine. You've got a socket over here, which has newer cable, which I can't really access because that cable is not up. I can only presume that's joining the wall somewhere. Obviously through there, taking the cupboards off. So that's the plan. I've got some tile bits that I'm going to mark out sockets. It's a shame that the sockets don't land in the center of a tile. It's in the, in the middle of a three, which is gonna go there multi-tool them out, angle grind them, get the hoover and do that, everything we can to them drop a box in to allow one to go there. And if I've got space to chuck another one in over here, this will cover socket size for this, that will cover for this, that will cover for that. And then there's one more to go over here, which is under this cupboard, but I can access pretty much the corner of this from the bedroom, chase down to a new socket there. And if the word top's gonna be accessible, we can put another one on top. Let me know if that camera angle was any good. You can see I've got it on here. Um, it's gonna come into its own. I think when I start doing second fixing, I start doing the fuse board, I start 
do me stuff. I'm going to have a go with it in the chase in a bit so you can say, see POV firsthand what it's like uh, to chase. But let me know below. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just wait to the end of the video to get consensus if it's any good or there's bits we can take from it and use it in certain situations. Fantastic. Regret wearing a vest because now I'm actually cold. Uh, that's going to be done later on today. I'm just waiting for the customer to give me a video call back to double check that they're happy with everything with that. So let's run upstairs and let's start chasing up the office which is a massive amount of chases. I'll run you through the thought process with that and we'll just get on with it because I know I talk too much and I'm really sorry. Okay then, take care now, bye bye. Also, I've been using the Bosch multi-tool for the past couple of videos because I got, I thought that the Bosch bits, multi-tool blades didn't fit in the Milwaukee one. So I went and picked it up from the unit and this is the bit that I'm going to attempt to try and uh, <laughs> take apart the tiles. And I've got a whole box of them, but I've just had to play with it and yeah, it is right, they do fit in this. So we can use this from now on, but um, yeah, we'll give it a go in a little bit. Sweet. Oh, and yeah, these are the bits. No, these aren't the bits. These are the wood ones we use. And these are the ones for the tiles, so. Yeah, finally as well. God, Nick, you said you'd stop talking, but you keep talking. I know, it's almost like it's my video. Uh, cable stapler, which I've still never used. But finally, I finally pulled my finger out of someone's bum hole. That was mom's. I finally got round to ordering some staples and I did actually pay £11 for next day delivery I think it was um, from ITS so we can actually have a play with this for the first time on a rewire so if you haven't seen the other videos this is where we're at with the rewire I spent the afternoon because I couldn't chase any of that wall there spending my time picking the floorboards up doing what I need to do trying to find cable runs so we've got on the wall well, there's a double socket down there we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sockets here. We've got a brushed outlet for all the cat cables to come through. Turn you around over here. We've got another two double sockets and a dual cat cable there. The light switch to go on the wall here. So my first job is realistically to contain the mess, which I've been really good in being on top of, is put as much of the floor back down as physically possible. Just so I can put some work mats down first chase is going to be the light switch as you can see i tried to go through it before with the old chaser just to show you guys of how bad the blade is that's as far as we got this is the uh, I forgot to bring my extension in the customer had one, so. <laughs> if it works and it's stupid, it's not stupid. We're sitting on, yeah. We can make a noise now. Right, is this the new? Yeah, this is the new one I just brought up. It's got to alter all the uh, settings on this. This is a 35 mil boxes, but then again, so I'll show you the difference between when the blade gets ground down and not. I was having to do it on 40, which technically is 40 mil, but the box isn't putting in a 35. But how much difference the blade makes once it starts to grade be ground down. So this is the blunt chaser from the other day. So you can see the difference there. The back blade, the new one, is touching the framework and this one isn't, so yeah. Nice. Just before I start this epic adventure and time lapse and fantastic music over, 
which you've already dropped a like on the video. If you can already, just, just down there, just drop a like and it makes my videos perform way better. So thank you very much. Is below you here and over there, there's two low level sockets and they're pretty much exactly in line with the sockets that are on that side of the wall. There's not much I can do um, because it's already been set out. This is the way the customer wants. I've already chased that side and it's gonna hit it this side. So we're gonna chase it out. If the brick comes through, we will deal with that. If it's back on back, we can bridge it, we can glue it, we can do whatever we want. We can hold it all in place with bonding. As long as it's safe, secure, ain't gonna fall out the wall and we can bond it all afterwards and everything, everything's hunky-dory, but these things do happen. These walls are incredibly thin, which is very annoying for me, but it is what it is. So enough said, let's do a time-lapse. <laughs> On. So we've got double socket and into double socket, going up, double socket, double socket, going across, down, this way. We've got our triple chase here, that's going to go to our brush outlet for all the uh, Cat 6 cables coming out, but then on top as well we've chased up to bring two Cat 6s up into the loft. It's worked really well, we haven't punched through, which I'm blessed with, so we have got the two screws here for the socket the other side, so you can see how thin the wall is going to be here but at the same time if i was using this just to do it it would have blown it out but at least with the chaser you can set the depth it takes exactly what you need it to take and you've still got i would say at least half an inch of bit of brick there so i'm going to take these screws out here uh, i will then get some ct1 or pgb glue this box in glue the box in the other wall and it's pretty much the same for this one here as well just to be on the safe side so i'm going to do that first and then so I've got more chases to do in here and we get these screwed in. I'm gonna get the laser out, get it all level, get it exactly how I want, because these sockets here need to be exactly the same over there around. So the laser level for this self-leveling bit is fantastic. So that is us done finally in the office, in and around, all down there. Just gonna have a bit of a sweep up down this side. Uh, so all we did, a couple of screws there, a couple of screws down here to this one. We've done the CT1 in and around, and I've done it the other side. I just wedged that in just to make sure it's perfectly level with the other stuff. We've got the all round band going in. So that side essentially is done. Now we've got to take all this down again. Unfortunately, annoyingly, I'd already finished all the chasing downstairs, but we'll take this down. I already emptied the Hoover twice already on this job, uh, but to go and do the stuff for the kitchen. So yeah, let's take everything down and uh, we can make a start on the kitchen. Fingers crossed the tiles cut nicely. Right, this is our one existing kitchen socket. We already do have, for some bizarre reason, a knockout there. So I'm gonna pilot that bit through to the other side. This will allow me to chase down here. We can put the chase within this, then chop in another socket down there and do, obviously it can be double one, so I can do a double chase up. One side of the chase here will be for the socket below and wherever the other one pops out with the chase for the kitchen. The customers also asked me to do the six mil on this side, um, on the other side of the hob. So when we pile a bit through here, obviously down below, I'm then gonna attach a new double socket so we can use zones. And then I'm gonna do two cable drops down. One will go significantly down to about, well, pretty much just the height of the double socket itself drill through on the angle to get the six mil to poke through underneath the plinth or directly into the back of the, the, the cupboard, depending where it lands. And then the other chase, I'm gonna bring down straight level with that. But both of the chases that will come down will be in zone with the socket below. So it's the only really way that I can sort of bring a circuit down, cover it within zones of a different outlet, but put it on this side of the wall rather than damaging that side. I can't see any regulation to state that it couldn't be the case. Right, we've got this in. We've got the hole here coming down, but at the same time, what I'm gonna do, I'm not only gonna bring a 2.5 down to here, I'm gonna bring the six mil down, which will go through, drill through the wall. I'm gonna put a fast fix box inside of the cupboard that's gonna have the cooker ISO that allows to do the cooker and the hob. Also have a single socket if the hob is on the plug top or either the cooker. Then also gonna bring a 2.5 down from that as well, through the same hole, down across this plinth and up, 
for the dishwasher wash, washing machine socket in the corner because that corner is going to make it a bit tricky for me to actually do it so i can do it from this end it'll be the last one on the radial and then this side we're just going to chase down to the socket like we've got here so i'm going to make this one a bit of a deeper chase compared to usual obviously because we've got two cables one being a six mil and then the two five that's going to come in and out So this is going to be one of the uh, most careful things I'm going to have to do. If this takes two hours, three hours, it takes two hours, three hours. So I've marked out that socket there and I've marked out that socket there. We've got the laser set up from the center of that socket, which annoyingly, if I turn this off, the cooker and that socket, they're, they're all different sizes, which is realistically, for me, when I came around to look at it, is a massive tell telltale sign that this hasn't been rewired when the kitchen was fitted. Things have been chucked in, thrown in, and people have tiled over the top of it. I mean, we have come to brand new kitchens where someone can't seem to do a straight line, but what I'm gonna do, I've gone upstairs directly above because I know exactly where that chase is. I know where the wall is. I know that there's no gas pipes coming across anywhere here, anywhere there. I can't actually find a gas pipe coming down this wall whatsoever. So I'm not concerned that I'm gonna go through the gas pipe. I've drawn around it to the edges. I've got this tile drill bit, which is a Bosch one in here. I'm gonna go and do each corner to the best of my ability. And then we've got the, I don't even know what you would call this blade. It's got fairy dust on the end of it. To go round, we've got the Hoover as a setup. We're gonna have the goggles on, everything we can. We just need to get through that first layer of tiles, nice and neat, clean edges to allow these boxes to fit in without bending them or warping them or anything. And once we're through the tile, I can easily then just get the SDS, chisel away at what we need to do because the brick is fairly decent to play with anyway. I would say that was very successful. We've got an ever so slight little chip there. I mean, if that's the worst bit of damage we've got, I'm not too arsed about it. I'm just gonna go and grab a socket because we do have an out, obviously a lip over of where the socket goes. Worst case scenario, if that is visible, I can get some grout or we can just put some white silicon around the front of the socket, but obviously do that on all to make sure it matches. But that was brilliant. This thing, absolutely chuffed to bits with it. I think that's fantastic. Um, yeah. Let me scoop all this out, let me do the other one, and we'll run back and see where we are. And here we have it, the moment of truth. It's flush, it's square, it's level. I've got the hole out. So what I've done, I've marked this, the center, as the light switch that's gonna go on the other side of the wall in the bathroom. That will give me my cable zonings again. Um, this is roughly the same height as the one, the other side as well. I think the light switch is about here. So happy days, right. Same process again, and we have smashed it. Got that one on there. We've got that one on there, all level. And this is the old socket I took off. But that little chip there, that obviously is annoying. When we get this on, we get it lined up, we get it level. Chip disappears, same thing with this one. That one's not far off for the same height. It's but blank plate, blank plate. And then, what like we said earlier, we can run a socket down into here, plug the plug into that, bada bing, bada boom. And lastly, now these are on, grommeted up, just moved everything over. The last bit I wanna do, the last bit of old wiring in the property is this one. So I've measured up up here, I know for a fact I've got access three to four to 500 across there, different measurements. I'm gonna chase down here, stop there, <laughs> drill down as best I can, and then try and drill up. Like This is gonna be the sketchy bit without cracking, damaging, loosening this tile. This is gonna be the fun bit. And then I'm gonna go and put a few switch spur here. We're gonna drill the same thing down. And that is then gonna allow us, there was currently a double socket that I've just took off. I'm gonna put a flat double socket unswitched under there for tumble dryer, washing machine, dishwasher, whatever it is to go under here, because at the moment it was just a permanent one down to what was a surface socket that takes up too much room. Point of isolation is non-existent without pulling the heavy washing machine out. So yeah, same process again. This, 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 and this. Wish me luck.
I think that is mission successful. I'm not going to lie. I really, really happy how it's turned out, and the dog is back. Um, so as you saw earlier, we've got the socket there, ready off this socket, off the fuse spur. We haven't damaged any of the tiles. Coming up there, it's chased, and it's going all the way up. So yeah, and any of the tiny little chips and whatever will be covered all by the socket front. So. Winner, winner. Right, I hope anyone that saw that got some tips and tricks. I was learning along the same time as you were. Luckily, no mistakes were made. I was happy with the finish. You can see down there, got it all clean. I'm just gonna have a video call with the customer in a minute to run them through, because obviously they were a bit concerned that I was gonna damage some stuff. I didn't say I'll try as hard as I can. We probably spent three to four hours on this. Um, was it worth it? Absolutely. It's, you know, undamaged kitchen. I'll have a good tidy up. I'm going to start running some cables. Um, so yeah, drop a like in the video if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next one. Love you, bye.